Hi, this is Zoe Williams, Youth Services Librarian at University Park Public Library, and today I am reading The Glorious Flight, Across the Channel with Louis Blario. It was written by Alice and Martin Provenson and published by Penguin Group. The Glorious Flight, Across the Channel with Louis Blario. It is a beautiful day. The sun is shining. Papa Blario and all his family, except Manu the cat and Chloe the cockatoo, are going for a ride in their shiny new car. As they roll up the street, they hear, far above in the sky, a strange sound. Clackata, clackata, clackata. Hark, says Papa Blario. He does not look where he is going. Just ahead on the narrow street is the wagon of Alphonse Jouvet full of pumpkins, also his son Caesar, and many cabbages. Crump goes the car into the cart of Alphonse Jouvet. The strange sound from the air is forgotten. Papa Blario is driving very slowly, but even so the cart is on its side. Pumpkins all over. No one is hurt, but there are bruised cabbages and angry faces. Fists are raised. The policeman, Achille Duval, poises his pencil when... Clackada, 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 clackada! Out of the clouds right over their heads soars a great white airship, and a man is sitting in a basket, driving it through the air. What a wonderful sight! It is the first airship seen over the city of Cambrai. Papa Blario invites everyone to the cafe. They toast the valiant aeronaut and each other, and Caesar, the brave Juvet boy, and the pumpkins. Everyone is happy. Everyone but Louis Blario. Now he has only one wish. He says to his family, I too will build a flying machine, a great white bird. We will work hard. We will all fly through the air like swallows. So here is Blario 1. No one is small enough to sit in it but Manu. That's the cat. And she will not do it. It has a little motor to make the wings flap. Alas, it flaps like a chicken. Never mind. Do you think he'll try again? This is more like it. Here is Blario 2, a glider, big enough to hold a man. Papa has not yet learned to pilot, so Gabriel Voisin, his good friend, will fly. A motorboat will tow it into the air, as the glider has no motor. All is in readiness. Gabriel gives the signal. Away roars the motorboat. Vroom! Like a great swan, the beautiful glider rises into the air and shoots down into the river with a splash that frightens the fishes. Gabriel Voisin is wet, but not hurt. We almost flew, he says. Papa has decided to learn to fly himself. Blario three has a fine motor and propeller, but it will not take off from the water. So Papa gives it two motors and two propellers to make Blario four. Blario 4 goes in beautiful circles. Papa is learning. Now Blario 5 hops over the ground like a rabbit. Papa is getting lots of practice. But Blario 6, it sails across a whole, a whole field before it hits a rock. Not so bad. We're getting warmer. And with Blario 7, Papa has an aeroplane that really can fly. No matter that the inevitable happens, a slight crash, a broken rib, a black eye, and add to the list of breaks, sprains, and bruises over the past six years. He's been working on this for six years. Now Papa is a real flyer and the Blario is a real aeroplane. How proud Alceste, Charmaine, Suzette, Jeannot, Gabriel, and Mama are. Only one thing remains, to prove how good the aeroplane is, to show the world what it can do, 
As if to light the spark, a great prize is offered to the first man to fly across the English Channel. 20 miles wide, black tossing waves, fog and rain, a very cold bath, a long swim. It is a dangerous prospect. Just what Papa likes. Here's the poster advertising the contest. $1,000 for the prize. On July 25th, 1909, as the sun rises, Papa Blario walks with his crutch, a minor flying accident, nothing serious, out to the field where his plane, Blario 11, waits. He kisses Alceste, Charmaine, Suzette, Jeannot, Gabriel, and Mama Blario. Papa climbs into the cockpit. His friend Alfred LeBlanc spins the propeller. It is 4.35 a.m. The motor coughs, <coughs> sputters, roars. Down the grassy field, Blario 11 bumps. She picks up speed and suddenly climbs into the sky. The French coast disappears. Far below is the destroyer, Escapette, waiting to pick up Papa if his motor fails, if they can find him in time. 10 minutes tick by. The waves reach up to catch the tiny plane. Now there is nothing but swirling fog. No France, no England, no waves. Papa is alone and lost. He sits motionless, not touching the steering lever and lets the plane go where it will. Suddenly, the white cliffs of Dover flash beneath him. A wonderful moment. 36 minutes after taking off from France, Papa is over England. He did it. Papa stops his engine and makes a very bad landing, as usual. Never mind about a broken propeller. Louis Blario is in England. He flew there in 37 minutes. What a shout goes up. Truly, it was a glorious flight. The end.